Hey guys, Jimmy Vegas here, and in this mini Unity tutorial, I'm going to show you how you can make a simple flashlight and turn it on and off with a simple C Sharp script. Don't forget, click on the subscribe button and click that bell icon as well to stay up to date with everything I upload on video game development on my channel. With that in mind, let's get to work. So, I have a scene with a first person controller, and obviously, this will work with a third person controller as well, and I have a flashlight here. So the way this is going to work is we're also going to have uh, an audio click for clicking, like obviously we press the F key and it'll click and it comes on, press it again and goes off. We're going to be doing that. So I have this little click sound bite right here, which I'm going to attach into my scene. So on my first person controller, I'm going to add that in, just have click sound and we'll place it on there. I'm going to untick play on away. So, like I said, the whole thing we're going to do is via a C Sharp script, but firstly, we need to introduce the light source for this flashlight. So, game object, light, and we'll do spotlight. The reason we're using spotlight is it gives us a better implementation and visualization of how light from a flashlight would uh, well, naturally occur. So, I'm going to place the spotlight to be part of the flashlight object zero out the position so it gets into the correct position and then realign it along with flashlight so if we bring it to about there front of the flashlight and then we need to rotate in fact i'm going to uncouple it first so i can rotate correctly and we'll rotate on don't know rotating that it should be on the x that way so obviously you would take a little bit more time than what I do. Uh, you probably shouldn't rush it as much as what I do. I'm just doing this to kind of show you the mechanics. So about there should be right. You can see these lines here represent the light from the torch, which uh, it would what it would look like. And that's okay. Obviously, like I say, you refine it a little bit more. The key things to note here, we need to change the range. Obviously, it's not going very far right now. So let's increase the range so we can see it. There we go, we can see the light there. And let's also increase the angle. Probably to about there. So we should be able to see it a little bit better now. So if we were to press play now, we'd be able to walk around with our flashlight. Well, helps if we reattach the spotlight back to the flashlight. It normally helps. So we're able to walk around with that spotlight showing accurately now. And obviously, I've not got everything lined up correctly, but you probably should do, because that'll be the way to do it. Uh, I'll just rotate mine a little bit more, just so as it makes it a little bit more realistic, I guess. Uh, let's bring it out, rotate a little more on the Y, about there, and reattach. So I'm going to turn off that spotlight now, and we're gonna create that C-sharp script. So right click, create, C sharp script and flash light mech. Obviously, mech is just short for mechanics. You can call the script whatever you want. There's no <laughs> right or wrong name, but you know, don't call it something like DFTHBVV2 because then that wouldn't make sense. Uh, I have actually double clicked that to open it up in Visual Studio. It just took a bit of time there. So, how are we going to do this? I'm going to keep void start and void update for now. There are a couple of things that we need to take note of. We need to take note of whether the flashlight is on or off. By default, we're going to have it as off. We also need to declare the light as a variable and the sound as a variable. So we'll start with public uh, bool because we need to detect if it's on or not. And I'll put is on equals false because by default it won't be on and then public and game object and we'll call this one light source semicolon and then finally public audio source and we'll just call this click sound semicolon so how do we do this well I think the best way to do this is just to monitor, or rather have the script monitor when we're pressing the F key. So we're going to have to set up the F key 
uh, before we can go any further. So let's get rid of Void Star because we don't need it. And let's head back to Unity. And then let's go to Edit, Project Settings. And in Project Settings, we need to modify the input. Now, I have already re uh, I'll start that sentence again. I have already added one extra here. By default, yours will probably say 18 and probably look like that. All you need to do is add one to your size and it will duplicate whatever is the bottom one. In this case, it's duplicated cancel. I'm going to call this F key and I'm going to make the positive button F. And then get rid of Alt positive button because we're only going to be using the F key on the keyboard. Obviously, if you're using a controller, that would be a little bit different. But for here and for all intents and purposes, we're using the F key for flashlight. So remember that name. Now heading back into Unity, we need to say if get button down and in brackets, nope, input dot get button down and in brackets and quotes the name that we've just created. So F key and then close bracket, close bracket and open curly bracket. Why are you doing that? Why are you doing that to me? There we go. So if we're pressing the F key, we then need to detect if the flashlight is already on. So if is on equals false, then do the following. Light source dot set active in brackets true. And at the same time, click sound dot set. Uh, no, dot play, isn't it? Don't know why I'm saying set active. Play, open close bracket, and then semicolon. And then we will say that is on equals true, because it is. We'll then do another if statement to say, basically, is it on? And then if it is, then we will uh, repeat. However, there is one small thing you have to be aware of now. Because if we get to the point where uh, we put another if statement, we're going to be stuck in an infinite loop. So the best way that we can deal with this is to create a fail safe in this. And we're going to write this if statement, but then we're also going to have a quick uh, addition in terms of a fail safe. Now, there are different ways of creating that, but I think the way we're going to do it is the easiest one of all. So let's say if, and in brackets, is on equals true, then we do the following. We can say uh, take those lines of code, place them here, and put that as false, and then is on also equals false. So that comes down to there and void update is closed and then so is the class. I noticed there was a little red line there, it's because I deleted an extra uh, closed curly bracket by mistake, but that's not to worry. So that fail safe we're going to have as public bool fail safe equals false semicolon. So the reason we're going to have this happen is because like I said, if we continue this script as it is, it will get stuck. It will basically say, we're pressing the F key. Well, is it off? Yeah, it's off, so let's turn it on, but then it gets turned on. But then it comes to this if statement and sees, oh, well, actually it's on, so let's turn it off. So it will never theoretically come on. So we need to say, if is on equal to false and fail safe is also equals false then do the following and it'll be the same down here so double ampersand for and and then fail safe equals false so by that standard what we have to do now is here say fail safe equals true semicolon and then place that here as well and then we now need to create a quick coroutine to keep that fail safe on for just a half a second, maybe. So let's have I enumerator, and we'll call this 
fail safe with a capital F. Open close bracket, open curly bracket. Yield, return new, wait for seconds, and we'll say, in fact, we'll make it a quarter of a second. So 0.25F, close bracket, semicolon. And then we'll say, fail safe equals false, semicolon. So the final thing we need to do is after we've uh, done the is on change at the end of each if statement, we then need to start the coroutine. So start coroutine, open bracket, and whatever you've named it as. So in this case, fail safe. Open close bracket, semicolon, and then that line of code can be copied here and save. So I'm going to quickly run through what's happening here because I realize it may be a little bit confusing, especially for beginners. So what's happening is we're checking to see if the F key is being pressed. If it is, then we need to check if the flashlight is on or not, and if the failsafe is on or not. If neither is on, then the failsafe goes on, the light comes on, the sound gets played, and then we say the light is on. But then we start a coroutine to stop the failsafe being false. So basically, or rather going back to false. So we can't have this if statement occur here. It can only be one or the other because of this I enumerator down here. So let's head back into Unity. And let's attach that flashlight script uh, to, let's attach it to our FPS controller. And then we just need to set those two variables. So the light source is going to be the spotlight that we added in at the start. And then the click sound is going to be, well, click sound. So now let's press play and check this out. So we can wander around with our flashlight, turn it on, turn it off. There we go. Awesome. So it's as simple as that to create a spotlight or rather a flashlight with a spotlight in Unity. Hope that's helped guys. And uh, yeah, thank you very much for watching.